now coming to the prevention part of rabies the prevention of rabies is very important topic because if prevention of rabies is not done then then the death after a rabies virus infection is inevitable so this prevention of the rabies part should must be learned with heart with by heart okay so in the prevention of the rabies we have three parts that is the proper wound care passive immunization and the active immunization after exposure and this together are called as the post exposure prophylaxis in the short we write it as pep post exposure prophylaxis so these three things the proper wound care passive immunization and active immunization should all be done together now coming to the local wound care the points in the to note in the local wound care are that this local wound care this local wound care will not uh, you know completely reduce the chance of the rabies virus infection but will largely reduce the chances of the rabies because it will remove the rabies viruses from the inoculation sites how can we do local wound care the local wound care is done by the physical cleaning with soap and water for 15 minutes the chemical cleaning with the povidone iodine or alcohol tetanus toxoid should be given because we know that the uh, adenine sites where there is discontinuity in the skin and uh, a trauma uh, about one centimeter deep if in if there is in the skin then there are chances of the inoculation of the spores of the tetany into those uh, into that sites of the uh, trauma and that may lead to tetanus so tetanus toxin after the after the bite uh, of an animal is very important as well and that also comes under the local wound care only and this point should be noted that suturing is never done in the local wound care suturing is never done because we have to do passive immunization thereafter so suturing is never done so what do we do in the local wound care we perform physical cleaning we perform chemical cleaning tetanus toxoid is given suturing is not done suturing is not done now coming to the passive immunization passive immunization means giving the infiltration with the in, uh, infiltration of the already formed antibodies against the rabies viruses so that those rabies viruses can be neutralized so in passive immunization anti rabies immunoglobulin is infiltrated at the site of at the site of wound and these anti rabies immunoglobulins just neutralize the viruses these anti rabies immunoglobulins they bind with the rabies antigens and neutralize the rabies virus there are two types of anti rabies immunoglobulins one is the equine anti rabies immunoglobulins means obtained from the horse and the other one is the human anti rabies immunoglobulin the point to note uh, about this is that this passive immunization should be done within 24 hours passive immunization should be done within 24 hours if it is done after 24 hours then there is no importance of the passive immunization there will be no importance of passive immunization it should always be done within 24 hours now coming to the active immunization active immunization of uh, uh, means that the body is led to uh, produce immunity on its own against the virus so for active immunization we use there are two types of vaccine for the active immunization there are two types of vaccine the first is the neural vaccine which is very old vaccine these neural vaccines are developed by were developed by the pasture and were uh, prepared from the nervous tissue of the 
infected animals which are infected with the rabies virus these neural toxins were developed from uh, the brain of the infected animals and the pasture was the first to develop this neural vaccines the example of this neural vaccines are the sample vaccine that is obtained from the sheep brain sample means as for sample as for sheep so sample vaccine that was obtained from the sheep brain and was inactivated by phenol see here in the sample we have p that means it was inactivated by phenol so s means uh, s means sample and as for also sheep so it was obtained from sheep brain and it has p in its name that means it was inactivated by phenol inactivated by phenol the other neural vaccines are the beta propiolactone vaccine that is nothing but a modified sample vaccine why do we call it beta propiolactone vaccine because it is inactivated by beta propiolactone and not phenol so as it is inactivated by beta propiolactone that's why it is called as the beta propiolactone vaccine but it is a modified sample vaccine only the other neural vaccines are the infant mouse brain vaccine which are obtained from the infant mouse brain but these neural vaccines are not in use nowadays we will see the reason later on for the time being we will focus on the non-neural vaccine so we have read about the neural vaccine now coming to the non-neural vaccine non-neural vaccine simply means the vaccines which are prepared from the sources other than the nervous tissue other than the nervous tissue so we if you are preparing the vaccine from any tissue uh, from any other uh, source other than the nervous tissue we will categorize it under the non-neural vaccine so for example we have the first source is the egg so egg derived vaccines which part of egg that is the allantoic cavity so we uh, we uh, allen we use the allantoic cavity for the development of the rabies vaccine the non neural rabies vaccine and the vaccines are the purified duck embryo vaccine pdev and live attenuated chick embryo vaccine purified duck embryo vaccine and live attenuated chick embryo vaccine these two are the egg derived vaccine other than that there is recombinant viral vaccines as well and some cell culture derived vaccines are also present there some cell derived cell culture derived vaccines are also there and these are the vaccines which are in use now these are in use now okay so the cell culture derived vaccines are used now or days what are some of the examples the examples being the purified chick embryo cell vaccine pcec purified vero cell vaccine pbc human deployed cell vaccine hdc these are some of the cell culture derived vaccines which are in use now or days coming to the post exposure profile exercise like how do we uh, you know choose what to do after the bite of any person uh, after a person has been bitten by an uh, animal infected with rabies virus so for that we have for that the guidelines have uh, divided several risk categories have formed several risk category so in the risk category 1 who are classified under the risk category 1 the risk category simply means risk category 1 means those people in which uh, or uh, whose skin is just leaked by any infected animal so uh, if the skin has been just leaked by an infected animal so that is categorized under the category 1 and for them there is no need of vaccine just simply washing the skin with soap and water is enough for that okay there will be no need of vaccine 
under the risk category 2 those people come where after the bite there is minor scratches or abrasions so as the animal has bitten the uh, bitten a person that has led to minor scratches or abrasions then it will be categorized under category 2 and for them we have to do wound management the physical cleaning chemical cleaning tetanus toxide and, and that all uh, that we have read in the uh, wound care then we have to give the rabies vaccine and we have also to absorb the dog for 10 days if possible okay we have to absorb the dog also for 10 days why do uh, okay we will see why we are observing the dog for 10 days now coming to the category 3 the category 3 means category 3 means if there is transdermal bite the dog or the animal has bitten deep so much so that it has reached to the muscles subcutaneous tissues and other deeper structures or if the dog has licked on a wound on an already present wound or uh, or any skin trauma if the dog or the animal has licked or has uh, produced a transdermal bite then that is uh, kept under category 3 and for that we have to do wound care that is the wound management physical cleaning cleaning chemical cleaning etc then we have also to give the anti rabies immunoglobulin we just infiltrate the area with the anti rabies immunoglobulin so that the viruses can be neutralized then we give the rabies vaccine the rabies vaccine for uh, production of the active immunity and we also observe the dog for the 10 days we observe the dog for 10 days why do we observe the dog for 10 days if the dog does not die after 10 days then we can uh, safely stop the vaccination active vaccination of the uh, person okay so that's the reason why uh, why we observe the dog for 10 days so this is all about the prevention of rabies virus infection so this rabies virus infection can be prevented with proper local wound care the passive immunization with the anti rabies immunoglobulins the uh, point to remember is that that should be administered within 24 hours if the patient presents after 24 hours of bite uh, of an uh, animal then there is no use or no importance of giving uh, infiltrating the site with the anti rabies immunoglobulins then we have the active immunization in active immunization we have to give the vaccine vaccines are of two types neural vaccines and the non-neural vaccines the neural vaccines are sample vaccine uh, beta propiolactam vaccine infant mouse brain vaccine the non-neural vaccines are those vaccines derived from any other source other than the virus tissues these are the anti-derived vaccines recombinant viral vaccines and the cell culture derived vaccines the cell culture derived vaccines are used nowadays and the post exposure profile access uh, is to prevent the rabies is to prevent the rabies and we give the post exposure profile access around the uh, according to the risk category according to the risk category so this is all about the rabies virus infection